Hi, welcome back to Safety and Civil Engineers Insight. Today, we are looking at highway geometry design and introduction to civil 3D software. What is civil 3D software? Civil 3D software is a creative software used by civil engineers to carry out their highway design. So, um, before you make use of your civil 3D software, there are some certain things you need to know before carrying out your design using civil 3D software. So that's what we will look at. So um, today's topic is on highway geometry design and introduction to civil 3D software by engineer Ekon Ifred A. So we go to the contents. So the contents, one says uh, introduction, road category, Factors influencing highway design, survey data, horizontal alignment, vertical alignment, cross section, pictorial view of geometry design and references. One point zero introduction. Geometric design of the highway deals with the dimensions and layout of visible features of the highway such as horizontal and vertical alignment, side distances and intersection. The geometrics of highway should be designed to provide efficiency in traffic operations with maximum safety at reasonable cost. So you have to key in these factors in your design, especially safety and other parameters, which is essential and key in your design. Let's move to the next one. 2.0 Road Category. Table 2.1 Definition of Typical Road Category. As you can see, we have different um, road category. We have A, B, C, and D. On that cat category A, we have description major interurban freeways and major rural roads. Category B interurban collectors and rural road category c lightly traffic rural roads strategic roads category d rural access road under importance of category a we have very important meaning is a very important highway the traffic flow is high under b we have important simply mean the highway is of essence and it's important we also have reasonable high traffic flow then on that category c we have less importance the trap the the, the 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 highway or the road is important but not as important as compared to um category a and b then category d is also less important so look at service level under category a very high level of service category b high level of service as well category c moderate level of service category d moderate to low level of service so what this is trying to say is this this uh, broad category trying to say that category a is a very very important highway the traffic is very, very high. Vehicle ply that road per seconds, per minute, per hour, every day, every day, every day. Category B also is, a, is an important highway compared to C and D. So when designing your highway, you have to know what type of road. Does it fall um, within category A? B, C, and D. So you have to know all this before designing your highway. So we go to the next one. 3.0 factors influencing highway design. The factors influencing highway design, they are also known as the design controls. What are these design controls? The design controls are the design speed, design vehicle, the traffic volume, capacity, and level of service. The design speed is a selected speed used to determine the various geometric design features 
of the roadway. So your design speed is important when carrying out your highway design. Also, you could determine your design speed from road category. If it's category A, B, C, or B. Design vehicle. This is the largest vehicle that will use the road with some considerable frequency and its dimensions were considered for the radar at intersections and turning. So, with your design vehicle, you could say, okay, fine, what is the design vehicle? Is it a truck? Is it a bus? Is it a passenger car? So you, so you should know what vehicle will use this road when which you are designing, what kind of vehicle. From there, you can now carry out your design. Traffic volume. Traffic volume is the number of vehicle or, pass or person that pass over a given section of a lane or roadway during a time of one hour or more. It is directly affects the geometric features, such as number of lane width and alignment. So your traffic volume directly affects the number of lane, the width, and the alignment. So traffic volume is important in your design. Capacity and level of service. The maximum number of vehicles that can pass on a road in one hour without unreasonable delay or restrict the driver freedom to maneuver on that prevailing roadway and traffic condition. So this is the, your design controls, they are very, very important in your highway design. So you put them into consideration. We move to the next one. We also have um, factors influencing highway design, the topography and the environmental factors. Under the topography, we have the plain, the rolling, the mountainous and the steep. So if your topography is plain rolling or mountainous, you have to put this into consideration because with this, it could help you to emphasize your design speed and other uh, design controls needed in your design. We also have um, environmental factors, which are the rainfall, the noise pollution, etc. Under factors influencing highway design, we have the driver, the pedestrian and the bike, Characteristics, we have the safety and economic consideration. So this is another key factor you should put into consideration. Table 3.1, highway design speed for terrain kilometers per hour. So as you can see, here are types of highway terrain. We have uh, limited access all terrain or limited access, we have uh, level, rolling, healing, and mountainous. So if your terrain is rolling, that is to say your design speed is, it is either 50 or 60 kilometers per hour. So with this table, you could emphasize, okay, my, my terrain is healing and mountainous. So I could go for 50 or 40 kilometers per hour as the case may be as your design speed so this table is gotten from federal ministry of works highway design manual you can check it out table 3.2 maximum degree of curve and minimum radius determined for limiting value of e and f so our e here simply means super elevation then F simply means our frictional force. So this is our design speed. We have 30, 40, 50, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, as the case may be. So if we have our design speed to be 50, if we take it down, we have 614. So on that minimum radius, we have 614 meters. So if our design speed is 50 kilometers per hour, then our minimum radius should be 614. So that's how to get your design speed and your minimum radius. 4.0, survey data. So this is a typical um, sample of our survey data gotten by the surveyor. So we have the easting and the northing and the elevation. 
When you impute this in Excel and import it into Civil 3D software, it helps you to generate certain parameters such as your horizontal alignment. So this is your horizontal alignment. This is how it looks like. It goes straight from Chinese 00, zero. It moves straight down. There's a curve here. Now the essence of this curve, the major essence of this curve is is not um is to engage your driver. You don't make your driver get too comfortable while driving. So this is how the curve goes here. R simply means the radius, hell, length of curve, our tangents, and our degree. The PC means point of curvature, the PT, point of tangency. So this is a typical example of our horizontal alignment. The next is, so we have here our vertical alignment, which is also known as our profile. So. This red line is our existing ground on our profile. The blue line is our finished ground, our design level finish ground. There are some setting key parameters here. Yes. BVCS simply means beginning of vertical curve station, ending of vertical curve station. So this is where our vertical curve starts and this is where it ends. This is a crest curve. It's a crest curve. You can see it here. This is the crest curve. Yeah. Here is ending of vertical curve station, ending of vertical curve and elevation, point of tangency station, point of tangency elevation. Points of vertical intersection point. This is this station. Point of vertical inter intersection elevation. The K simply means vertical curve coefficient. LVC simply means length of vertical curve. So this is a typical example of our vertical alignment, also known as profile. The next is cross section. The cross section is a typical road section. This is how our typical um, road cross section looks like. Total width of the pavement is 7.3 meters. This is uh, 3650 mm to the left, 3650 mm to the right. So this is our shoulder, this is our drainage, traffic shoulder drainage. Here is our natural ground level. This is our natural ground level. Then here is a lightrite salt base existing or from Brewer Pit. The next is um, crushed granite stone base. And lastly is our, this one is our Asphaltic concrete, the binder course. So this is a typical example of cross section of, of our highway. So this is how it looks like. The next is a pictorial view of geometric design elements. So this is our highway. This is the width. This is the width, possibly maybe some point three meters wide. Then this is the curve. So you, you ensure you introduce a curve at some point. The major essence of this curve is not to uh, make your driver so comfortable. You have to en engage him. You have to make him so busy so that it, it don't slip away. So that's the main essence of that curve. So here is our, is our vertical curve. Here's a um, sack curve. Here's our crest. Here's also our sack. So I believe you enjoy this. So let's go into the main software. So this is Civil 3D software. This is the environment of Civil 3D software. So um, when you get your survey 
data in Excel, you import it into the software to generate some key parameters. So those key parameters, that's what we'll be looking at in the next class. We will look at the following. One, importing survey data. Two, create surface. Three, design alignment, horizontal alignment. Four, generating existing ground profile and design finish ground, which is the vertical alignment. Five, draw assemblies in bracket, typical cross section. Six, building corridors. Seven, sample lines. Eight, generate cross section. And lastly, the nine, generate at works quantity. So those are the things we will look into in our next videos. We'll take them item by item. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, kindly subscribe to my channel, like and share to friends and family. And don't forget, if you have any comments, you can drop your comment on the comment box section. Thank you and God bless.